We're here in early July for the Festival of San Fermin, and that means the running of the bulls, one of Europe's most exuberant festivals. For nine days each July, throngs of visitors, most dressed in the traditional white with red sashes and kerchiefs, come to run with the bulls and a whole lot more. The festival which packs this city has deep roots. For centuries, the people of this region have honored Saint Fermin, their patron saint, with processions and parties. He was decapitated in the second century for his faith, and the red bandanas you see everywhere are a distant reminder of his martyrdom. And you know, I don't think anybody on this square knows or even cares. But at the Church of San Fermin, it's a capacity crowd, and there's no question what to wear for this mass. To this day, locals look to their hometown saint for protection. Back out on the streets, it's a party for young and old. There's plenty of fun for kids, and towering giants add a playful mystique to the festivities. The literary giant, Ernest Hemingway, is celebrated by Pamplona as if he were a native son. Hemingway first came here for the 1923 running of the bulls. Inspired by the spectacle, he later wrote his bullfighting classic, The Sun Also Rises. He said he enjoyed seeing two wild animals running together, one on two legs and the other on four. Hemingway put Pamplona on the world map. When he first visited, it was a dusty town of 30,000 with an obscure bullfighting festival. Now, a million people a year come here for one of the world's great parties. After dark, the town erupts into a rollicking party scene. While the craziness rages day and night, the city's well organized and even with all the alcohol, it feels in control and things go smoothly. Amazing, in just a few hours, this same street will host a very different spectacle. The running of the bulls takes place early each morning. Spectators claim a vantage point along the barrier at the crack of dawn. Early in the morning? Nope, for many of these revelers, it's still late at night. The anticipation itself is thrilling. Security crews sweep those not running out of the way. Shop windows and doors are boarded up. Fencing is set up to keep the bulls on course and protect the crowd. The runners are called mozos. While many are just finishing up a night of drinking, others train for the event. They take the ritual seriously and run every year. At eight o'clock, a rocket is fired and the mozos take off. Moments later, a second rocket means the bulls have been released. They stampede half a mile through the town from their pens to the bullfighting arena. At full gallop, it goes by fast. Bulls thunder through the entire route in just two and a half minutes. The mozos try to run in front of the bulls for as long as possible, usually just a few seconds before diving out of the way. They say on a good run, you feel the breath of the bull on the back of your legs. Cruel as this all seems for the bulls who scramble for footing on the cobblestones as they rush toward their doom in the bull ring, the human participants don't come out unscathed. Each year, dozens of people are gored or trampled. Over the last century, 15 mozos have been killed at the event. After it's done, people gather for breakfast and review the highlights on TV. All day long, local channels replay that morning's spectacle. The finale of the event each day is in the evening when crowds fill the bullring. Pamplona's Arena, the third biggest in the world after Madrid and Mexico City, is sold out each day of the festival. One by one, the bulls that ran that morning explode out of the gate to meet their matador. First, the picadors.
then the Banderillos. And finally, the Matador in his sparkling suit of light. While cruel brutality to many, others still consider bullfighting an art form. It's hard for me to appreciate, but to the Spaniards who pack this arena, there's a nobility to the beast and an elegance to the fight. Good matadors are like rock stars. They perform with drama, daring, and grace. With each thrilling pass, the crowds cheer until the bull meets his predictable end. If the fight is deemed a good one, the people wave kerchiefs and call for a trophy to be awarded. For this fight, the matador is given an ear from his victim and struts triumphantly around the arena. The festival's energy courses through the city. Overlooking the main square, the venerable Café Arunia pulses with music and dance. Enjoying the scene with its delightful 1888 interior, I'm impressed by the joyful enthusiasm the people of this town have for their festival of San Fermín. Oh man, it is cold out there. Hi, I'm Rick Steves. You know, winter may not be the best time to travel, but it's a perfect time to start planning your next trip. And to start off, you gotta decide where you're gonna go. Here's a hint. I like to go where the people are having the most fun. And we've just written a new guidebook. It's called Rick Steves European Festivals. And this features my favorite 10 festivals in Europe, plus 30 festivals submitted by our traveling readers. This gives you my favorite 10 festivals and why they're festivals and how to enjoy them. We got the Palio, we got Oktoberfest, Bastille Day, Carnival, the running of the bulls, so much fun and so much color. Now, when you know where you're gonna travel, then pick up the latest edition of one of my Rick Steves complete guidebooks. This would be the book for whatever country that has all the hotels, restaurants, and sightseeing specifics. These two books, Rick Steves European Festivals and the latest edition of our Rick Steves Complete Guide, teaming up to help you have the best possible trip. Happy travels.